turn to 394. 390, uh, yeah, 394. I tell you what, he, he, he has a minute, his spine got stuck. <laughs> they see you, just have a seat. Come on in. <laughs> We're country church. And I didn't know where you were going to be playing that as well or not. So. I think David told them. Uh, I can't. Somebody else wants to lead it. Come on, light the candles. We'll sing it without the music. Jennifer, stand. Get t turn to 394. Jennifer's going to lead it. I'm not going to it. Something beautiful, something good, oh my confusion, he understood, all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful. No, I done been told too many times in my life I can't sing. Welcome everybody out with us this morning. Glad to have y'all out on this beautiful morning. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this opportunity to be in your house, to hear your word in songs and in, in reading and in, in, in what you will put in my mouth to say. Lord, we just pray that each one will receive a blessing from coming out this day, that each heart would be touched in a way that you know that it needs to be touched, that our eyes will be opened and that we'll be waking up and be stirred to move and to be about the build, building of your kingdom. We ask now for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. In Christ's holy name, amen. amen. Uh, take just a moment right quick and look at our bulletin on the back and I'm not going to go through all that the meetings and stuff at the top are, are standard you should know about those Jennifer's going it's an open women's meeting Monday night 
I understand Jennifer's going to have a meal. The church is invited. She's going to talk about her trip to China. Uh, candy making, don't forget that, on the 6th. There's candy in the fellowship hall over there. If you can get some out for sale or if you want to buy it, be sure and sign the paper on what you've taken out when you leave. Uh, conference is coming up the 17th. I'd like as many of you as can to plan to go to St. James at Greenville. Uh, at least have a showing of a few people down there. Youth event after church today. Uh, next, next, Sunday. next Sunday, the 9th, I'm sorry, October the 9th. Uh, Darlene has tickets for the fall festival. Each family is asked to take 10 tickets if you can and try to sell them. Uh, and each family is asked to donate $20 per person or $10 for singles. Uh, anything anybody needs to add to that? I also, uh, the Hines family sent a thank you note telling the church what a wonderful lunch and appreciated the meal for the, fa for the family for Derwood Hines on that. Our opening hymn this morning is 514. <laughs> Be seated.
Thank you. We're going to go by uh, the hymnal for communion today, so it's going to be a little bit different at the end of the service. Um, so we're going to move right on into the morning message this morning, as soon as everybody gets seated. And then that'll work better for the young children coming back in for communion, and we'll see how it goes to follow the book. <laughs> Which means we'll take up the offering during communion. Uh, I've never done it this way, but this is, this is what the church says you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> I guess I've been somewhat of a rogue over the years. <clears throat> the last two sermons, I guess you would say, have been to the choir, meaning preaching to the church at large. Uh, and this is the third in a series, the last in a series that I've been doing on the book of Jude. This is the last one on Jude. And... Uh, the church needs it today. The church is filled with liberal bishops, liberal preachers. The church is sometimes, I think, is more interested in money than they are in membership to get money than they are in other things. Uh, a lot of the church members today, I'm not sure what they're interested in. The church has become, as far as from what I can see, as a whole, I'm just speaking that not the individuals, but as a whole, has become like the church in Jerusalem. Especially the hierarchy part of the churches, whether it's in the Baptist hierarchy part of their churches or the other. I mean, we, we, they look more at the budget than they seem to be looking at anything else. Uh, and, and I realize it takes money to run the church. I mean, it, the light bills aren't free. Uh, I just think it's too much thought about that today. Instead of preaching the word of God and getting the word out. In Revelation 3.15, before we get into today's scripture, 3.15 through 16, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were hot or cold. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Think about that a moment. He's talking to the church. He's talking to Christians. He's not talking to the sinners out there in the world. He's talking to you and me. Today's part three, part one was don't forget to remember. Part two was disobedient rebels against the world, will of God. Today is the disgraceful who rebel against the ways of God. If you look at John 14, 15, think about this also for a moment. What a man really believes, he lives. The rest is just talk. What a man really, a person, a woman, it says a man, but what a person really believes, he lives, they live, it's, the rest is just talk. Jude 14 through 22, 1, 14 through 22. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admir admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last times who would walk after their own ungodly lust? These be they who separate themselves sensually, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and to eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We talked about how e Egypt 
uh, the great miracles in Egypt that brought Israel out of Egypt. We talked of the doubt of the Israelite children as they trumped through the wilderness. That doubt led them to doing not what God had asked. It led them to the destruction. It led God to destroy all the older generation that he brought out of Egypt except two people. We talked of that. Joshua and Caleb are the only two that came out of Egypt that got to enter the promised land. All the rest of them, God waited till they died in the wilderness. Part of them, he actually opened up a chasm and, and, and killed. That's the God you worship. He's a jealous God. He's a loving God. Loving of his people. He would that none would perish. But there are those who are going to disobey, as we see with the children of Israel. Jesus warned those that were disobedient in worship. When Jesus walked the earth, he walked through Jerusalem, and he continually warned the church, the high priest, the temple, the, the religious leaders. He continually warned them of their disobedience in the way that they were worshiping in Jerusalem. He went on in his last days, his last few days, he promised him, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You won't change your ways. Not one stone's going to be left upon another. 70 AD, Jerusalem was destroyed. Thousands of Jews were executed or killed. And the temple was totally 100% destroyed. So was Jerusalem. The only thing of the old one remains today is a little bit of the retaining wall. Everything else is gone. God allowed the Romans to wipe it out. Too many churches today and many Christians are just as they were in Israel. Israel had become lukewarm. Lukewarm at the best. And Jude is talking at the days of Paul prior to all of this having happened. The temple hasn't been destroyed yet. Jude is talking to the Israelite people, to the Jewish people. He's talking to the Christian people, to the ones that converted. Jude's trying to tell them what's coming. Jude says Christians that are work lukewarm or is in the past. Jude says you better remember this. Jude said we'd better remember the past. Remember what he's talking to them. Remember what he did in the, in the desert of Sinai to those who disobeyed. All of what God has promised is coming. Sadly, I know pastors today that are lukewarm, bishops that are even, I don't know what they are. I call them lukewarm, some of them, but I'm, I don't even sure they're even lukewarm. But pastors, preachers, deacons, uh, I tell you what, God's not happy with the church today. In my opinion, as a whole, he's happy with certain Christians. But he's not happy with the church as a whole. And Jude said if the church and the country and the world continues to forget the past, you're doomed to repeat it. I've said this before in other sermons. If you're a history buff like I am, it's interesting to look down through history how humanity has risen, sunk in sin, been destroyed, almost wiped out, climbed that ladder again, get to a certain point, and downhill they go again. Uh, you can look back through any history book you want to read. And it's true. J Jude said, don't forget the past. Jude said, look at Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at the cities around them that had given themselves over to sexual immorality. And gone after strange flesh and set forth an example of suffering and vengeance of eternal fire of God. Just think, think about the two words Sodom and Gomorrah. Razor sharp rebellion, sickening perversity, and fiery judgment. This sin's name, Sodomy, comes from the name of that city, Sodom. They're not gays, they're Sodomites. Period. Gay is some name come out of Hollywood back in the 60s because they knew people weren't going to go around calling them sodomites. They don't like that name. Our nation has gone so far down the path of becoming like Sodom and Gomorrah with our fixation on sex today. This nation is wrapped up in sex today. Television. How many hundred programs are on one of these things? I bet you there ain't 25 of them that ain't got sex in them that ain't fitting to watch. I go through the channel sometimes trying to find something to watch, and the first thing you do pops up there is a naked woman. What, I mean, it's just or naked, it's, it's ridiculous. There's some show what now, what's it called? 
naked and afraid. I ain't watched it, but I, I got a feeling what it is. What have we come to as a nation? 23 different times in the six scriptures we read, we read 23, 20, 23 different times you read in the scriptures about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. 23 times it's in there. From the Old Testament all the way into the New Testament and Revelations in Jude. Many people in our country today are ungodly, they're filthy, they're unlawful, they're unjust, and they're giving over to sexual sin. It's rampant. Interesting enough, Sodom was a beautiful place. Think about this. Sodom was a beautiful place. Remember, Abraham told Lot, said, you can have your choice of any place you want to live, and I'll take what you don't want. And Lot looks out over the, over the, over the, uh, the four spacious skies and the amber waves of grain and the purple mountain's majesty above the fruited plain, is, and he says, I'll take that. Lot thought it'd be the best of the Middle East. This was the place that Lot chose to go to. And the city gave themselves over to sexual immorality, strange flesh, the Bible says, Genesis 19, 1 through 5. Two angels, you know the story, two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and when Lot saw them, he rose up to meet them, and he bowed down to them because he, he recognized them. And he said, My lords, please, please come into my house and spend the night, and then go on your way. And they said, no, we're going to sleep out in the town square. No, 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 no. He insisted, you, you can't do that. No, 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 you've you got to come to my house. So they finally said, well, all right, we'll go to your house. Well, before they lay down to sleep, the men of the city come to, to uh, Lot's house, and he wanted, they surrounded the house, the Bible says, and he wanted Lot to bring these two men out. Wanted them to bring them out so they could know them sexually. God had mercy on the only religious person in Sodom. He sent two angels to Sodom and Gomorrah to warn them of the coming judgment if they didn't repent. The men of that city came to Lot's house where the angels were staying and they demanded them to come out so that they could perform sexual, homosexual rape on them. They could perform sodomy on them. Instead of choosing spiritual prosperity, they chose sexual perversity, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, all these things over God's ways, sex outside of marriage. Does this sound like America today? Am I wrong? Am I lying? Am I preaching something that's not the truth? Do you hear it anywhere on the television today of the preachers preaching it? What does Sodom and Gomorrah have to do with the church and apostasy? Sexual immorality, America's bathing in it today. People living together apart from marriage, it's, it's an all-time high. Divorce rates skyrocketing, homosexuality is now, now a militant movement. Without the fear of society's disfavor, men and women use the same bathrooms. Thank God I don't have a little girl. I'd be in prison. Because the first time a man went in the bathroom with him, I'd, have, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be locked up. I'm going to have an adult man in a bathroom with my little girl going to the bathroom at the same time or talking to her, and you've got to lost your minds. And we sit by quietly. There are no demonstrations to stop this. All the demonstrations are to have more of it. We're not going to come play the ball games in Charlotte. You won't let the men and women use the same bathroom. Let me tell you, this was going on in Rome and places like that that God destroyed. Researchers have divided the respondents in this nation into three categories, traditional, relational, and recreational. The traditional group said that the religious belief always guides our sexual behavior in everything we do. 
get premarital extra outside pre sex outside of premar premarital and ex homosexuality sex is wrong the relational group believe sex should be a part of just a living it's just if you if you love us if we in love that's fine we in love that's fine how many times were you in love before you found the right woman and got married I thought you were in love let me put it that way don't raise your hands out there men women either the relational group believe sex is fine as long as you love each other that's if you love someone it really don't matter the final group the recreational proponents believes that just 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 in everybody should enjoy it everybody should have any time you want it with anybody you want just enjoy it are you ready for this only 50.5 percent of conservative Christians fall into the traditional group of Christians not talking to country only 50 percent of Christians fall into the traditional group apostate church That means that half of the people who call themselves evangelical conservative Christians believe that sex does not necessarily have to be restricted to marriage. Uh, it can be the most sexual sinful society in the history of mankind that we're living in here in America today. I want to tell you that you, you can use civil rights, human rights, constitutional rights, or individual rights to just, justify sexual sin. Whether it's adultery, fornication, homosexuality, I'm going to tell you, but God says it's wrong. It's wrong. To say otherwise is an apostate teaching. And we have those in the church today that are teaching otherwise. In the Baptist church, in the Methodist church, in the Christian church. And they're doing it for one reason. Membership. Money. We got people more coming in. We accept everything. Sign in Greenville and one of the churches come dressed as you are but change inside. I got on the bullet to come as you are but make a change when you come to God and when you come to Jesus Christ. Change inside. Jude goes on to say that sodomites that are set forth as an example of suffering in the Bible and the vengeance set forth literally means they oppose openly public view. In other words, Jude says the sodomites are laid out like a corpse in a coffin, dead. Jude lays them out just like a corpse in a coffin, dead. They're dead. One of the interesting places in Israel to me and always has been to me is the Dead Sea. You know you can fly an airplane down over the Dead Sea and you'd be 1,000 feet below sea level. Can you imagine that? You can fly lower than the ocean. You can fly a plane over the Dead Sea and you'll be flying 1,000 feet below sea level. <laughs> it has one outlet at its beginning. Its average rate of evaporation is something like 7 million tons a day of evaporation. Only the fresh water evaporates. It's 27% mineral. It's impossible to sink in those waters. They're both salty and bitter. It's estimated that they contain 45 billion tons of valuable chemicals, uh, sodium, chloride, sulfur, potassium, magnesium, bromide, and at the southern tip of the Dead Sea, or at least they did, I don't want to see what the Israelites operate a plant that extracts these minerals from the water and they, they sell the minerals. You know what's interesting about the Dead Sea? That's where they say Sodom and Gomorrah is at, at the bottom of the Dead Sea. Desert all around. Used to be a lush plain, grassland, beautiful country. Lot picked the most beautiful spot there was to go. Two cities on the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now at the bottom of the Dead Sea. Totally destroyed.
Likewise, as it was in the days of Lot, Jesus says, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man comes. Luke 17, 28 through 30. Jesus said, the more we become like Sodom and Gomorrah, the closer we get to the second coming of the judgment. Billy Graham. You know what? Billy Graham says, if God does not judge America, he, then he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. Now that's pretty, Billy Graham sunk us pretty dang, pretty low. And a lot of people think a lot of him, including myself. He said, yep, if God does not judge America, then he needs to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. We are rapidly becoming almost a total apostate nation, a nation without God. All these things Jude talks about happening before Jesus came. He didn't spare the angels that rebelled. What makes, what makes America think he's going to spare us? He didn't even, the fallen angels that rebelled, he didn't spare them. He's locked them up in chains until he comes. In total darkness, it says the scriptures. Nothing was ever done in the Old Testament that can even compare to the rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, this happened before Jesus Christ. We have something that we, even greater than, than Lot and Abraham had, we have, we have Jesus Christ that's come and died for our sins and told us all we have to do is accept Him as our Savior and live a life pleasing to Him. We have more than they had and we have rejected it. We sit quietly by. There are no demonstrations in the streets of Greenville or Farmville against what's going on. There's no outcry against it. In fact, the, the Attorney General of this state, he says, that's fine. Let's open up the bathrooms to everybody. The governor said no, and he's standing by himself. They're going to vote him out of office. He went on to say, well, if 50% of the people up there want them open, we open. They can't get 50% of the people up there to want them open. God will judge those who turn from him and those who never turn to him. If God didn't spare angels, he didn't spare Israel, he didn't spare the angels, he didn't spare Sodom and Gomorrah, what in the world makes us think he's going to spare us? Look at, look at, you know, I watched a little bit of the History Channel yesterday and the calamities in the last few years that have come upon this world and this nation that are, we call them natural happenings. And they're getting faster and faster and faster and worse and worse and worse. The typhoons, the earthquakes, the volcanoes. And even the scientists are smart enough to predict that if things continue as they are, it's going to be even worse in the next few years than it's been in the past. You're being warned. Even by some scientists, you're being warned. And America's paying no attention. You say, well, what can we do about it? We need to get out and start opening up our mouths and talking. Not just inside the church about it. We need to talk out into society about it. We need to stand up and be heard. Maybe if one little church stands up and be heard, maybe some other churches will start standing up and be heard. They've already taken my right away to politic up here. I can't tell you who to vote for and who not to vote for. You lose your tax permit if I do that, and they catch me. If I start telling you who to vote for and who not to vote for, yeah, church can lose its tax exemption. They're already making one attack. Hitler started out with a gradual attack on the church until he did away with it. Wake up, America. We're in trouble. When the fire of God's judgment falls on this world once again, there's only going to be one spot that's safe. There's only one spot in this whole place that you're going to be safe, and that's standing at the foot of the cross. 
because the fire has already fell down. My sins have already been forgiven. They were forgiven by him and through his death. That's the only safe place it left in this world to stand is at the foot of the cross. With Jesus Christ. You see, God's judgment's already fallen on this world. All who are not standing at the foot of the cross are going to burn in hell. Can't be no simpler, no plainer than that. Pray for the preachers. Pray for the, to start telling the truth and st stop being politically correct. Most of my message today comes from the sex life of Americans, Christians. Leadership Summer 55, page 31, and from Pastor James Merritt, who preached a very similar sermon uh, some time back. Sermon needs to be preached to the, to the world. Amen. Amen. I'll get back to some of your love sermons next Sunday. Make you feel a little better. This is World Communion Sunday. We do have communion. <clears throat> the Methodist Church has an open communion, meaning that you do not have to be a member of the Methodist Church to take communion with us. All we ask, if your heart is right with God, if you love Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you've accepted Him as your Savior, then feel free to, to take communion. <clears throat> if you'll take your hymnals... <clears throat> And turn to page. <clears throat> Dorothy, you might want to come up if you're going to play. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Got it. I mixed up again. She's already up and ready. <laughs> so y'all swapped on me. I thought all the music was going to be back yonder this morning. I'm getting old and confused easy. <clears throat> page 12. Christ our Lord invites all to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take a moment now, if you would, and pray in silence.